Okay, we have a cable driven grandfather clock, triple chime. This is a Hermley. 1985 is the date of manufacture. And as you can see, uh, this is very, very greasy. It's been sprayed at some point. Pivots are very, very dirty. So at minimum, it's going to require a really good cleaning. And here's the front. Good days for working on a clock. It's gotten really cold outside. In fact, we're expecting a weather forecast for perhaps a blizzard coming this way in the next couple days. Let me get this board off of here. Clean that up later, it's kind of contaminated with oil. I'll start taking her apart. Okay, here's our gear arrangement. Um, it's really greasy and oily. So we'll, uh, we'll work from here. Some of these I've already cleaned. See how freely they move. This one doesn't, so we're going to have to take that off and clean that. Now we have the gears all in there, ready to be individually cleaned, and we'll do those. So we're in major cleaning. Okay, I loosened the clip. I take that off, and then I take this wheel off. I think you can see, look at the garbage on it. So I'm taking all these pieces off and cleaning them. Yeah, that's a lot cleaner now. Can you use this one? All right, each of these has to be cleaned as well. These are just, they're so greasy that it feels like they're covered with Vaseline. So I've got to take these plastic uh, protectors off. I can get a hold of them. They're so slick with grease. Anyway, we slide these off. That's got to be cleaned. <coughs> then I need to take the cables off. I'll just let them unwind. And you can see the See here, I don't know if you can see, but that's, that's grease. To get this apart, and we've got a clip we've got to take off here. We'll take, okay, there, we finally got it off. And it's just so greasy. Now that, uh, that loose lets this come loose and we can drive that out. And that comes apart. And that is all grease and oil. That's that's all grease there. been slightly over oiled. And we got one more to take apart here. Same thing. And take these clips off. And then uh, take the 
cable is off. What holds the cable on the ring here is this slot. Just a knot in the cable with a brass clip on it. Alright, now I've got to get that one off. Let's see if this one's any easier. Everything's so greasy. Even each, even the gears, completely covered with grease and oil. The grease and oil has caused that to collect all kinds of dirt, debris, and it's just going to cause wear. So all this has to be cleaned. Hey, okay, you got all the parts cleaned. back there. And tomorrow we can uh, put each train back between the plates, check for wear. We know the center arbor has to be rebushed on the back side of the plate, back plate. We'll check and see if any other pivot holes need to be bushed. Alright, this is a plate that has the hole for the center. And as you can see, that is really worn. So we're going to have to rebush that thing. And I've got both plates clean now. But that uh, seems to be. You can see where the worn part, that's where it's worn in that direction. So we got to, there's where it'd be centered. That's where it's worn. Okay, so we'll work on that. Alright, here's that pivot for the center wheel that we have to replace. And it's worn that way, so that's where it's got to be with a new bushing. The plate off. I just need to measure what we got here. That yeah, looks like uh, 1.3 millimeters. Okay, I filed out the bottom so that it's got the same amount of wear, or filed out the unworn side, same amount as the worn side. So now when I use the reamer to cut the hole, it'll center. I'm going to go ahead and install this back in the bushing, or in the plate, so that I can uh, cut it easier. I won't have to try to hold this by hand. Okay, I got a 3.47 reamer. Okay, that's done. Now the hole is big enough. That's 3.7 millimeters. That's big enough to put the bushing into. Take the burr off of that side. And we'll take the burr off of this side. Now, I'm going to remove that little plate because I want to put the bushing in from the front so that it flattens out. Okay, here's the bushing. We need to put that in here. Okay, that's flat. Uh, oh, that one was so tough to get in. I think that bushing was a little oversized. But anyway, it's in there. And we'll grind off the top here just a little bit. We need to see if that fits. We use a cutting brooch. We go in here and we'll cut that.
It's too small yet. Now we gotta broach it some more. Okay, now let's see what we got. Okay, that fits no. It's got plenty of movement. Okay. Now smooth broach this and that'll be ready. Okay, to smooth this, I'm going to put a little oil on that brooch. Go in to the hole, rotate this, turn it, polish it, burnish it a little bit, and smooth everything out. should do it. Okay, there's the new bushing and there's the movement you see in, you see in there. Now, okay, I got the chime train in and when I move the main wheel, the only one that I see as a problem is this one right here. It's going to have to be rebushed. And the front on that chime side, the only one I really see that's got bad play in it is this one here. That's the third gear in the chain. And there's the worn side, there's the unworn side. So that needs to be replaced. And let's mark that one. And there's the hole in the back. You look toward the black dot. You can see that the rim ring around the hole, the oil sink, is thinner on the black dot, the magic marker dot, than it is on the left. So that's worn to the right. Strike side, looking at this one, I just don't like the amount of flopping around that's doing, so we'll replace that one. And the others, I didn't find anything wrong. And on the front of the strike side, the arbor that sticks out here, it carries the gathering pallet. That's pretty badly worn, so we're going to have to do that too. Cleaned gears all back in place now. Okay, so there's one of our new bushings. And there's another bushing. There's that bushing. There's that bushing. Nice and tight. Take one of these apart. Make sure you pay attention to the orientation of the, these plates. <clears throat> That's where you're going to hook the big end. That part of the uh, of the cape, like so. So you got to make sure you, you don't want this or the hole turned the wrong way. All right now we're putting the wheels or the uh, main wheel back in. <coughs> Gears go toward the front. You got to get you got to get this little plastic loop onto that wire there. Anyway, we're going to slide this in this way. Get that hook out of the way. We're going to get that in there. Once that's in, then you got to take the winding arbor. Maybe. And turn it to catches the hook inside the barrel. 
and then comes through the other side. You gotta take one of these little puppies, these C clips, and you gotta clip it. And turn that over. Hi Sonny, come on buddy. Hey bud. Hey little fella. Hey little fella. Here, come here. Hey boy. Come on up there. Come here, let me scratch you. That a boy. That's a boy. That's a boy. Okay, it's kind of tricky trying to do this and run the camera at the same time. Okay. Once the C clip is on there, then the winding arbor won't come out near here. Wheel is in place, and we got one more to put in. And here's where we gotta put that clip. I came all the way downstairs to get something, and I went was standing there, and I can't remember what it was. As soon as I get upstairs, I'll remember. I'll be back. Oh, Charlie, I wanted to tell you, Charlie called, and he said they're leaving. They were gonna leave about 4:30. Okay. Okay. Before we put any of the Lovers back on. We want to make sure we oil all the bearings. I'm going to take just a tiny drop and we're going to put it on each. Pretty much put back together. Got the levers on, and uh, there's some bad staining in this brass. I don't know what caused that, but we're not going to mess with trying to get that off. I'm sure, there's no more dust on here. You can see the strike right now. Here's your rack that controls the number of strikes. Here's the rack tail. This is the rack tail that when this is finally tripped to strike hours lets the rack drop and the rack will drop the number of teeth that are allowed by where this rack tail drops on this snail. And when this is done being lifted, the rack is all the way up here, then this lever can, can stop a pin on that wheel and that stops the strike. We start off on this minute shaft behind the snail and everything. There are four there are four cams. If you watch this lever, you can tell when we get to the hour cam. If I turn, I'm going to hit the... It's going to turn this at hand. See that lever go up? It just went up once. That's a quarter hour. There's the half hour. There's the three quarter hour. See the bigger jump on the, on the hour? Quarter hour half hour, three quarter hour, hour, bigger jump. And it's an important thing. Hello, ma. Unlike a lot of movements, we're used to having a lever in between the plates that's going to stop a strike. <clears throat> in this case, it's this hook right here that stops every stops the strike. And that stops the strike by catching on this hook or this pin, this flat pin here. 
And if we put this on, it's flat on both sides. We put it on facing that thing. Okay. And there we are when it's in its stop position. And we got to tighten that down now. Then for each quarter hour, there's this little cam. And we see the one quarter, the half, the three quarter, and the hour. And the hour has a little extra bump on the end, and that's for a reason. If we just put this on, and right now, we just, remember, we just went past the hour cam on the minute hand, so we should be right here. With the hour, after the hour. So stop position and after the hour. <clears throat> and if that's all there was to this, you know, the clock will run just fine. What happens is, what, what happens if the strike gets out of sequence? And it's, uh, say, striking the quarter hour on the half hour. Or the half hour on the quarter hour. You know, you could correct that manually. But in this case, there's another mechanism that corrects everything. Here's another little cam that's going to go on, or little, the lever that's going to go on here. It's got a little point here and it's got a little hook here. And when we put it on, notice it's in the same position as the hook on the stop lever back here. But this thing will ride on the back of this cam, this little point. On the back of that cam, that point rides on this surface here. And so this is held up above that stop pin. It can't get down to that stop pin unless this can drop down. And it can at a certain point. On the back of this cam, you'll notice there's a little depression right here. And you notice where that's at. It's right after the three-quarter hour, or at the three-quarter hour. So when this is riding on that thing, every time the time gets to the three-quarter hour, At the three-quarter hour, this little point here can drop down into that little depression. Like there. So, as this is turning through the hour, Notice through the three-quarter hour, this is still above, being held up with a half hour. Now we get to the three-quarter hour, and that thing can fall down and lock everything up. So after the three-quarter hour, everything is locked up. So if the cams, if the next lift is not the hour lift, on that minute hand, or that minute shaft, this will remain on that pin and keep it from chiming. This cannot move because everything is locked up until we get to the hour lift on the minute hand. At that point, the hour lift, watch what happens. Remember we said it was bigger? Here's the 
quarter hour, half hour, three quarter hour. Now when we get to the hour, this gets lifted off of that pin and that allows it to run on the hour. Okay. So only on the hour is this thing lifted off of the pin and unlocks everything right there so that this can this can now strike strikes the hour this will have moved to this out of the depression and now things are back in sequence that's that's the autocorrect so that the if the thing gets out of strike it will uh, uh, correct itself at the hour. So to set this up, you put this one on this, put this on, put this on, tighten this, then put this one on, and set it so that it's at the three-quarter hour. So this is all locked. From there on, don't worry about anything, it'll correct itself. No matter what this is, this is, whether it's on a quarter hour, three quarter hour, half hour, whatever, it'll correct itself at the hour. Just important, put this in the lock position and this at, at uh, with this hook, both hooks on that pin, and then set this to the three quarter hour and it'll self correct. Okay, we've got this set up on the test stand and test running. Gonna let it run for a while. And we'll see how it goes. I'd been asked I'd been asked at some point how to set the chime so that it's uh, playing the right tune at the right quarter. Well the lowest setting on this, if you push this all the way down, that puts that cam on the inside there, this little thing, at its highest point, which pushes the roller out as far as it will go. And that's the Westminster Chimes. Now the way to do this then is at the quarter hour you should see four descending tones on the hammer. I'm going to move this to the quarter hour. Oh, what happened? Let me get a chime. Okay, I need to go slow. No chime. Okay. Now well, that's because it's in the lock position. It's not going to chime right till it gets to the hour. So I got to go around. Now watch what happens at the hour. The hour, everything will correct itself. Okay. Now it's chiming, and uh, so it's done chiming. You should then see it strike. It's set at four o'clock. Okay, it struck. Okay, now when we move the hour hand to the quarter hour, you see the next thing to strike here is the set is quarter hour. We should see four descending hammers. One, two, three, four, all in a row from here down. So that's set correctly. If it was doing something other than that, then the way to do that, undo that, is to loosen the set screw on this gear, push it all the way in, 
rotate this hammer these hammers until you get the four descending notes keep it in sp uh, place pull the gear back out till it's just engaging the other gear tighten it back up and you're you're all set so we're going to let that run for a while okay had it had it all together set it up it would only run for a couple of minutes and it would quit I tried everything under the sun and I think what we do is we have a problem with this this is what's called an auto beat a verge they refer it to but it's actually a, an anchor and uh, as you can see let me take closer there's uh kind of fiber material I don't know it's a doesn't look like plastic it might be a plastic it could be just a fiber of some kind and what it's supposed to do it's supposed to keep this tight enough that it will take the push of the escape wheel and transfer that energy to the pendulum keep the clock running but loose enough that if we swing the pendulum very wide then each of these pallets or tips of the anchor will bottom out on the <coughs> escape wheel which has very short narrow teeth will bottom out on the uh, as it swings wide will bottom out and allow this to twist so if it bottoms out here, it will do that, then it will bottom out here. And as it bottoms out and the, keeps moving this back and forth, and when the pendulum finally gets down to its, its uh, proper swing, then this will automatically then be, quote, in beat. Now in reality it's not completely in beat, but good enough that it'll keep the clock running. If this is too loose though, this will get bumped out of beat uh, very very easily and the clock quits running. And that can happen if this is ever oiled. And when we started out we know that this movement had been sprayed heavily with some kind of oil or grease and so what I did was I took this all back apart, rechecked all the pivots, rechecked everything that I could check, and I just assumed that this had oil in it somewhere. <clears throat> now I can get a replacement for this, but it's going to run somewhere around 40, 50 bucks. And I can't be sure that it will work either. So anyway, what I did was I put this in 99% isopropyl alcohol, swished it around, let it soak for a while, then thoroughly dried this thing. And I'm hoping that I've eliminated any oil that's in it. It appears to be much tighter than what it was before. So I'm going to put the movement all back together again install this and see if it runs. If it runs then we'll be ready to go. Okay we had the uh, anchor put back in and it ran for a few hours and then quit and I couldn't figure out what was going on. Then I realized that there's a little bit of shakiness in the test stand and what was actually happening was a sympathetic vibration that was set up that was causing the clock to stop so once I got some shims under the bottoms of the test stand started things up again now it's run all night and uh, through the morning 
so it appears to be running and we will now have to let it run for at least a week but in the meantime what we'll do is we'll still have to set up the Geneva stops on this after I wind these to their the weights to their final position but right now everything seems to be working and uh, it just uh, went into warning for the half hour set and I see I've got to make an adjustment on the wheels because when it went into warning it started lifting a hammer and it's not supposed to do that so we have to move it back just a tiny bit so I'll have to make that fine adjustment and uh, why don't we go ahead and push this forward to the half hour and you can see what's going on here and there's the half hour chime okay so that's working and we will uh, just let her run now I'm going to wind each of these barrels up until the the barrel is surface the spirals are completely filled with cable barrel is filled to within one turn All right. well setting up these winding stops or Geneva stops we bring our we bring our weight up to where we want it about two inches from the bottom of the of the uh, board and this wheel is composed of 13 teeth and 13 spaces between teeth and two of those spaces are shorter than the others the idea behind that is that this gear we throw this on here for a second which is composed of 12 teeth and 12 spaces and has one of the teeth longer than the other so that when it gets to one of those short spaces those short spaces it will jam like that when that ro rotates into that short space that'll stop it that'll stop that from the weight from falling and stop the movement uh, the thing is we got to initially set this up and the way to think about this is because this has one tooth or this has one tooth less in this wheel than this one does when and this is rotating to the left this is rotating to the right this will rotate this 12 spaces when this rotates once so this will be rotating this way if it's going to only rotate this 12 spaces then this long tooth we set it up this way a long tooth. Let me get a pointer. In other words, uh, if this were to go round this way, a full 12 spaces, or a full, yeah, a full 13 spaces, then it would be back in the same place that it is now. But it's going to be one tooth shy of rotating a full rotation. So this is the space that will be where this long tooth is and it will lock up after just one one rotation so we need to set this so that that tooth will lock there when this rotates this way a full turn this will rotate one tooth short of a full turn and it's rotating this way now if this were to if this were to rotate a full rotation 
with this one then this two this space would be here again but it will be since it's moving this will be one space less and this is the space that will be here and then that long tooth can go in there and it's going to progressively move into these teeth as this as this rotates this way this will rotate this way each rotation of this will allow this to be one tooth short of a full rotation and so progressively as this thing turns this long tooth will be here then 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 so forth it's going to take 12 rotations of this wheel to get back to locking up in here so if we have this set up this way um, when this uh, rotates this way 12 times it will lock in this thing this notch and the weight will be all the way at the bottom then we wind this up 12 times and it will again then lock in this uh, in this slot and we'll go through that same so we need to put this long tooth lined up with the second of the two of the two uh, black marks got everything adjusted finalized and it's running we'll let it run for the weekend and then we'll arrange to take this back to the owner